I have a, a feeling towards this province, by the way, I love being here. Uh, I love the opportunity that I'm involved with, with all the companies that uh, I've invested in. I think that what might happen here will be truly significant on a world basis, not just Canada, by the way, on a world basis. So why not try to get involved in it? Now, I want to kind of set the stage here by talking about a little bit of history first. And I'm doing this as someone giving investment advice, OK? That we live in a very complicated financial world that might be under serious stress today. The first chart is a chart of the NASDAQ from 1999 to 2011, OK? It went down 77%. By the way, I think this could happen again, OK? Here's the S&P, down 57. Here's a chart of Citigroup. Hit a low of, they say it hit a low of 10, but I guarantee you it traded at a dollar. They did a reverse split, and so they show it at 10, because I bought it at a dollar. <laughs> Having been short, way the hell up there, OK? S seeing it coming. Here's Fannie Mae, same thing. Traded at a dollar. It, what's the high there? I can't hardly read it, but a 160 or something traded down a dollar. Uh, here's GM. Now you see, you, nobody remembers what it was like in 07, 08, how, how bad it was. GM traded at a dollar. I know Ford traded at a dollar because I bought them both, okay? Now, just to give you some potential upside, oh, look at gold. What did it do from 1999 to 2011? Oh, it was up 525% as compared to those other things that I just showed you. The next chart is the, the chart of the, what's called the UE index. It went up 1,700%, 1,700, 1,700%. You don't get opportunities like this too often. You do not get opportunities like this too often when you have a secular move in a commodity, and you're, it's early days, OK? That is the first sense of the opportunity that we might have here in the gold and precious metal business in Newfoundland. And one of the things I find most intriguing about it is it's 110 kilometers. I mean, a lot of you are in the mining business. I mean, who could even ever imagine owning, owning something 110 kilometers? I mean, that's just, I doubt that anybody owns anything that's 110 kilometers. And here we are in prime country and owning 110 kilometers. With the drilling up north, they've covered, uh, the prospector drilled over uh, five kilometers and finding very significant gold. Uh, there's your first hole, OK? 92 over 19 meters. Now I can tell you, uh, I can tell you this because I was with Kirkland when we bought New Market, which had the Fosterville property in Australia and I was a shareholder of Newmarket, and we would come up with holes like this. Okay. The, but they're, you know, one in a million. I mean, these holes that are, that are being announced are incredibly valuable. And I'm going to go to the value part, okay? This is the most important thing to understand what this opportunity might be. If you have one gram of gold, you got a big open pit, I mean, maybe you make 0.2 of a gram of profit, 0.2, okay? You got a 30 gram ore body. You maybe cost you two grams to mine it. You got 28 grams versus 0.2. That's 140 times more profitable. Okay, that's 140 times more profitable. If it was 15 grams, it's 60 times more profitable. These are ores of magnitude that are crazy. Now, I, have, I put in the latest news release from April 25th, so that's three or four days ago. But it basically said we have uh, 22 meters of something like 17 grams, and I think it was uh, 22, 18 meters of 12 grams. That's my recollection. And one of the things that's interesting about that, 40 meters, OK? I always like doing this, 40 meters. Would that be about 40 meters to the end of this room? About that, right? Can you imagine mining something that wide? How easy is that? 40 meters? Oh my god. And that's just, you know, the width of the zone. We got the height, the depth, the strike, 
I'm just talking about the thickness of the zone. This is like, be a layup mining net. So that, these results are, they just continue to amaze with their results. I put down here a list of the hits. I mean, we don't need to go there, but just out of the park. Here in Newfoundland. Okay. I, I put this chart of, of uh, Kirkland Lake to, to tell you something. So in, uh, probably before 2016, I was an investor in Crocodile Gold that became New Market. And here's a mining company that was announcing, they were mining three gram gold. Then all of a sudden the announcement, oh, we got five gram gold. We got eight gram gold. We got 15 gram gold. We got 25 gram gold. Holy jeez, what's going on here? And of course this turned out to be Fosterville in, in uh, Australia, the highest grade operating gold mine. And I, when we finally bought a new market, which I was a big shareholder in, but as a chairman of Kirkland, I would try to convince people that, you know, this thing is going to be so big because the profitability with those kind of grades is going to be so off the wall that Kirkland could go crazy. And I don't think I ever convinced a director to buy any. Uh, two employees, I think, bought it. Two. Everyone missed the opportunity. I don't know why they missed the opportunity. And then sooner or later, they, along comes Kirkland, they report like, we made $200 million this quarter. Well, duh. When you got that kind of grade, of course you're going to make $200 million. We're in a bull market in gold. We've gone from 1650 to 2050. We're in a bull market. Get with it. <laughs> um, now I'm going to, I want to talk about, oh, and of course we got central bank demand for gold. Uh, which is off the wall. Here's a thing from China where the retail sales were up something like 10% for the month. And what led it? Oh, jewelry's up 37%. Well, well, well. What are the three greatest things about Newfoundland? Okay, we know about the people, right? Yeah, okay. Number two. Oh, the people again. <laughs> Who did this? I'll do the next. Oh, the people again. Oh, my God. And the winner is the people. <laughs> but there are other things, and it's been the Premier and the Minister of uh, Industry have sort of focused on some of these things. Uh, the government sponsorship, which I just find amazing. I just can't believe that, you know, I read things where the government says, we want five mines here in, in, by 2030. I mean, what other governments ever said that? You know, they're all crickets. Um, the fact that there's exploration grants, and by the way, I think that is a very, very intelligent thing to have exploration grants. <laughs> it's just that little bit that helps the guy get going, okay? And you know that ultimately, somebody else has to pony up the other 85%, right? So fine, you get 100% spent and you give up 12 and a half, but you're probably getting it back in taxes anyway. And then what if you find something? then we can all retire early, right? <laughs> uh, the Geologic Association, I think, has been spectacular here. I see the work that they had done before and you know, going out and doing soil samples and studying the geology and all. It's been absolutely spectacular. Uh, and of course, the logistics and accessibility are, you, you can't beat it. I mean, when you can drive to the drill, like that's just, what a wonderful environment. Okay, what's the opportunity? I've written down these four things. Well, first of all, uh, let's deal. We're going to have a seismic survey done here. There'll be a little bit of thumping going on around Gander, right? Serious ground thumping to see what's really down there. You guys might feel that. Let me know what it's like. <laughs> um, and that, the, the reason this could be interesting is the seismic can reach down to apparently a kilometer and a half below ground, a kilometer and a half. These guys have drilled down to a maximum 400 meters. Well, what if the seismic comes along and says, oh, boys, it's, it's down at 850 meters, and it's even better than what you've been drilling, I hope. So hopes, Eric. <laughs> um, but that's going to be very interesting, and we'll start to get those results, I guess, hopefully, in the third quarter. The strike extension. Strike means the length of a, of a deposit, okay? And we've already got gold in the top nine kilometers, over five kilometers. Uh, as I was walking out, you know, uh, on the um, 
the property. One of my favorite questions, well, how far is that from you know, where you've drilled already and, and announced? You know, they've announced they've got something that's 200 meters on strike, 200 meters of strike. Oh, uh, that's about 500 meters away. Oh, really? Maybe it's 700 meters of strike. This makes a big difference, <laughs> your strike. And I think the fact is that it's incredibly perspective. We got it on the east side of the Appleton, we got it on the west side of the Appleton, which is probably gonna go deeper. It was described to me initially, it's like a feather, okay? And the Appleton's the core of the feather and you got all these things that come off. And there could be a lot of things coming off that we haven't got to drilling yet. <laughs> well, I think there's a huge opportunity. I hope people get it. I hope everyone gets a lot of bountifulness out of the opportunity in front of you. Thank you, thank you.